and you refer some tips for DJs, which was pretty cool. He put out a little bit, a little tweet thread um, for people. I'm assuming a lot of DJs are at home thinking, mulling over things and seeing how they can become of use after the lockdown. Because I imagine a lot of people's careers will change in it. I would imagine for everyday people like you and I, right? Um, every uh, your average everyday civilian who goes to work and just clocks in and clocks out, our life will change. Um, maybe for the better, maybe for the worse. But for sure, if you work in the entertainment industry, there's no shadow without a shadow of a doubt, your life's going to change. Because sometimes, even if you have like a really collectively, if you have like a dead month, no, sorry, a dead year, like where you know everyone agrees that it wasn't the best you know bookings were down overall maybe a terrorist attack happened maybe you know um maybe the uh, the economy of some country crashed whatever right something happens that affects everybody it usually means that some people have to start you know making some pivots in their career maybe they go you know behind the scenes maybe they go entirely back to, maybe they go back to school move into an entirely new area of life entire area of in their career whatever right people make those kind of changes every year sometimes so if some occasion like this happens which i think has probably given people an excuse who probably weren't necessarily that into it anyway you know the long flights the missing birthdays missing weddings and shit because i can imagine i can imagine you know being a dj professionally was to be a dream job or course which i'd love to do but also know that if you have a small family or if you come from a very family oriented background or if you just have a good friends it'd be quite um it's be a big sacrifice to just miss out on you know really crucial moments in your life because you're pursuing your dreams so if this event happens where it kind of makes you think you know what i live in a pretty cool city and uh, maybe you live in madrid maybe you live in you know what you call it you live in brighton bristol whatever right um you've got a few local gigs you can do on the weekend you might just think you know what i'm just going to keep it inland i'm going to play up and down the country do a couple of festivals here and there and make sure I collect my coin that way, but I don't need to be, you know, playing every other weekend in some <laughs> ditch somewhere in the middle of Amsterdam for some sweaty teenagers, isn't it? Like, you know, or you just probably have those sets available anyway in general. They'll probably be going to local people who they can pay less for and don't have to, you know, um, have the risk of having the whole event thrown off because, you know, someone catches the COVID. But I thought this thread was pretty interesting anyway, regardless. He gave some insights on some stuff that I thought I've been thinking about myself. He started off here. He says, I don't see people trying to I don't see people trying to talk about how to approach learning to DJ very often. And when I do, it feels like it's extremely binary between YouTube vids talking about record box, hot cues and loops. Uh, these houses is a feeling. And if you don't use Vimeo, you're a fraud because I say so, which is true. isn't it? I think coming into but it depends what it is, because I think DJing a lot like comedy it depends what you are in it for. Well, what are your entry points exactly right because i don't i don't know maybe it's different in scenes but i don't think anyone comes into like electronic the, the stuff that i listen to anyway the disco house techno and uh immediately says uh i want to go play somewhere i don't think that's necessarily the thing that happens you don't probably go i want to go play in this massive warehouse venue i don't think that's the actual vibe i think you get into it first find out what genre works the best for you find out what scene you like the best and then from there you figure out a way of getting involved whether it's you know designing flyers taking pictures being a dog guy dog girl working as a bartender whatever you probably work it out that way but even if you do you might have let's say you do decide to get into it and just be a DJ straight away there'll be people that you follow that you will then kind of uh, base your career on I remember when I got into it my kind of reference points at the beginning were like you know Seth Troxler, Ricardo Villalobos, Jamie Jones, uh, Richie Horton, uh, Jeff Mill, DJ Hell, Ben Clock. Like, those are the people I remember first seeing, like, watching them talk, uh, the answer and talk about DJing, right? And then I was like, okay, cool, I want to do that. And then from there, you see how they play, and then you kind of frame the way you play or the way you select uh, based on what you see your heroes doing. Or sometimes you might just straight up copy them for a while until you decide until you realize oh, actually it's better if i just get my own style and then from that building block of copying them you build out your own style you get your own influences you, you define your own taste and you start going from there so it's quite hard to take any value if anything from those videos you see online or on youtube about loops i think they work well if you do 
like if you want to add to your kind of proficiency because i think you know once you get into it you'll be a proficient dj right once you start buying tunes and mixing every weekend you'll be able to mix and blend you'll be able to go from like point a to point b but then if you want to add more layers to it because i remember that's what something dvs once said that i remember him saying right um he's more, he plays a lot of the Berkheim. um i'm pretty sure he's canadian or american i forgot but he lives in berlin and i remember he made a really good point in the interview where he said um digital DJing on the USB is all good and all well and good. I think there was a debate about vinyl v vinyl v uh, CDJs or vinyl v USBs. But he said the issue is that because it's because the tech is so advanced, people are quite lazy and they don't do a lot behind the decks. And I think the US one's a really um, physical DJ, right? He's always there manipulating shit, right? Always on the filters, uh, uh, making sure he, the 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 beats are matching up and shit. Um, he's not just kind of blending in, in and out. He's really getting in in the weeds there when he's mixing. And he said that if the gear is making things easier, you should be doing things on top of it to really differentiate yourself. So it doesn't just sound like a, a Spotify playlist, for instance, right? Um, which I really took to heed. And I think if you're able to take some of those lessons online about doing loops and stuff and then add that to your kind of base level of DJ, you, you could then be on another level. Because I think most people, even the pros who are playing on the festival circuit they don't really do much right they they kind of they kind of phone it in a bit they go up play their play their playlist that they prepared or even maybe they didn't repair same thing they played yesterday in another venue in another part of the world and just play it from front to back again which is why they look so bored behind the decks usually but if you can maybe add some kind of you know some loops some effects to your set that aren't too cheesy that when it works out but again it's hard to kind of skirt to keep on that line in it between doing things that are like cool and doing things that are like corny or a bit cheesy and he continues here he says in this thread he says um i've been borrowing some new pioneer stuff for the past couple of weeks and this made me think about dj tech and how i would approach teaching the skills i have uh, feel like i've acquired over the last 15 years or so but with the access to all the new stuff it's available now i tried to make a start by writing something about it very briefly so i clicked the post quickly show you what he writ here i thought it was pretty interesting um he says it follow um it's, it might sound basic but i still think that one of the best things you can do if you're learning to dj is to cover up the bpm readers and learn to mix uh by ear there are some there are a few reasons for this and none of them are about authenticity or elitism what equipment you've decided to start using most new digital technology has been designed to streamline the experience of playing music but technology will always let you down occasionally whether it's down to the flow in the tech itself or in the errors made in the preparation to use that tech if you're relying on working on it working perfectly then you won't be able to correct errors by ear when they do happen if you can learn to mix by ear you'll end up with a more intuitive understanding of why a blend might be working or why it might not be despite the bpm batching which is definitely true and i think that's something that you learn and again it depends who you get into i think if you get into the more eclectic djs like if you start listening to dj harvey as kind of your first entry point i think that's probably a good thing because what will end up happening or like a boris yeah from another burger and panama bar resident because they usually do that thing where they never play a record because they, they don't do bpm writing right which is something a lot of people do when they get into it which is probably why a lot of people don't like tech house because a lot of those guys are bpm writers they just sit on like 115 to 125 and that's it and it doesn't really go anywhere and all the tracks sound the same so if you're able to actually uh, refine your taste in music, put up a repertoire of stuff that you like to play, and you're able just to play whatever that fits into the set and the sound, you'll avoid doing the BPM matching. But I think what uh, ben, uh, Benny first said here is very true about just mixing in general. I remember even when I was using my, excuse me, my laptop or using a MIDI player at the beginning, I would always just, when especially when I was using it at home, I would always turn off the waveforms, number one, or I'll take off the BPMs because obviously if you have the waveforms up, you can just match, you know, you can match the bass lines, match the hi hats, match the snare, whatever on the count of one, two, three, four, on the count of one, sorry. And you can essentially be mixed effortlessly without even, you know, having any headphones in. But when you get take get rid of the waveform and maybe even the BPM if you're that confident and just start mixing and start kind of using your ears to figure out where the pitch should be it then refines your ear a bit better and then you're able then to maybe mix stuff in that just might feel right but maybe isn't the right bpm like i'll play a techno set and there'll be like a song that i want to play that's like 98 bpm it doesn't necessarily 
it doesn't match up BPM wise, but it actually sounds quite close to it, right? So you would then be able to just hit that, mix that onto the one, flip it in and it works straight away. So if you get into the more eclectic dudes, like I don't know, Leonard Wilkins is a good example of that too. They have a really good way of just playing whatever into their set, kind of like a radio DJ would, right? Um, they'll just play whatever. And then, you know, next one song will be a slow jam. Next song will be like a fist in the air. I think that's, that's, that is really my experience for the time that I've been DJing. It's been about, what, 10 years or so. That's what separates the the kind of average from the good. I would say the ability to just play whatever in a set and make it work, make it sound right. And then for the top level, obviously, so the taste in music really is what separates everybody else. And it continues here. The article says um, two tracks can be mathematically in time with each other, but can sound like carnage if the rhythmic emphasis, which is, you know, he's more of a nerd than me in this, but it definitely makes sense here. He says, but, um, but they can sound like carnage if the rhythmic emphasis across the track is very different. If you've learned to mix by ear, you'll eventually be better equipped to think about what songs will fit together effortlessly and which will require a heavier handed approach in a mix. Or if you decided that car crashes and heavy clangs are key to your aesthetic, you'll be able to implement them with intention. It says here, if you mix by ear, you can also you also don't have to do as much tedious laptop admin preparing your set, which I definitely agree. You don't need to sit in record box or serato for as long. You'll be able to trust yourself to improvise and you'll feel more relaxed in the club itself as a result. That's why I like to, this is something backwards, but when I prepare my sets, that's why I like to use iTunes. So I'll go into iTunes. There might be some albums that I've downloaded recently or sometimes I'll just download loads of EPs, buy loads of stuff online and they'll chuck them into playlists of stuff of just some genres like wide, like kind of wide range. Like I've got genres, I've got genre playlists that, you know, are labeled disco, new disco, techno, deep house, house, da, 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 vintage, whatever, soulful house. I'll just, you know, those are kind of some loose headings. I'll chuck whatever I can in there. And then when I want to, when I want to go out for a set, imagine I'm playing on a Friday and this is Monday. Um, I'll just essentially go through the folders and check the new stuff that I've added onto it. and just add that to another playlist of that's going to go to the USB and the stuff that I've got in that, in those kind of like playlists, those kind of crates, quote unquote, they're not, you know, they're not all the same BPM. I've not, I've bet, I've not, I've not kind of categorized them or sorted them by BPM. They're just in there as tunes, so that when then, so then when I drag them onto record box, I can then have a good idea about the flow I'm going for. And then what I'll notice more like in a, more often than not is that usually the peak hour stuff that I've kind of picked out is the same BPM, but the stuff in the middle, stuff in the start, is just completely all over the place. And that comes from that kind of learning. So that's a good way to kind of go about preparing stuff if you, you know any advice for me and it continues here said it's hard to articulate this kind of thing without sounding like a hippie and this is mostly just a personal observation but a big part of what's kept me engaged with this so for so many years is that when uh, i'm really enjoying a set i can get into some kind of flow state through playing the music when i can get to the state i feel at that i feel at one with the vibes quote unquote um, it's effortless and it feels like I'm inside the music. But if I'm overwhelmingly focused on the functionality of CDJs and on stuff I prepared in record box, it's harder to get to that place. And it can feel more just like uh, another numb screen, a numb, numbing screen based activity. And crucially, that makes the end results sound different, which I definitely agree with. Um, again, I think a lot, a lot more people should probably concentrate on just making sure they get, you know, they develop a good taste in music. I think that's probably more important than going on b-port and just downloading whatever else is have is, is playing and playing that that's super boring but then once you've done that obviously the next step is to definitely go for um you know go for this approach where you can mix whatever you just you just have the ability to do it because you know it sounds right as opposed to just riding the bpm which is definitely a mistake i've seen people doing when they start off things but you know you've got to start somewhere i 